Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. If you like this video, please comment, like and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. And let's get started. Now, this seems to be an easyish puzzle, hopefully. I'll be presenting two methods. Let's get started. Now, a semicircle is inscribed in a 6 8 10 triangle so that the diameter is on the hypotenuse. Find the radius of the circle. So I'm going to start by making some connections as always. You know, we have a center here. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect the center to one of the points of tangency. And then I'll be connecting that to another point of tangency. Those are going to make 90 degree angles and this is going to form a square. Okay, each side of the square is going to be of length r. Since the legs are 6 and 8, this should be 6 minus r and this should be 8 minus r. Let's call these pieces a and b. And we know that the hypotenuse is 10, right? Therefore, the whole thing is going to be 10. And we'll take care of that in a little bit. So what I'd like to do is, I'd like to take these two right triangles and use the Pythagorean theorem. All right, that's the plan. And I'll be presenting two methods. So this is our first method. Let's go ahead and continue. So first, I'd like to write 6 minus r squared plus r squared is equal to a squared. So this allows me to basically expand it, right? And this is going to become 2r squared. So what I can do is I can basically square it both sides and get the a in terms of r. So that's going to be my first step. My second step is going to involve getting the b in terms of r and then we'll put it, put it together. I'll show you how to do that. So the legs are r and 8 minus r. So it's going to be r squared plus 8 minus r squared is equal to b squared. From here, we get r squared plus r squared, which is definitely 2r squared, minus 16r plus 64. That should equal b squared. If you square it both sides, just like a, similarly, we're going to be getting the value of b. And that should be this one. So now I got a and b, and I'd like to put it together. And how do I put it together? Well, they make up the hypotenuse, right? And the hypotenuse is 10. So that means that a plus b is equal to 10. So that's how we put it together. So let's go ahead and write that down as an equation. And obviously this is a radical equation, but guess what? We're going to turn this radical equation, which is very radical, by the way, right? We're going to turn this into a quadratic equation. How do we do that? Well, we're going to square both sides. Let's go ahead and do it. But before we square both sides, I think this would be meaningful. Let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit, tiny bit. So what I'd like to do is I'll, I'd like to take out the 2, which is going to uh, come out as a square root of 2. So I'm going to have the same term, but this time the 2s are dropped, right? And then I have r squared minus 8r plus 32. Everything is divided by 2, basically, right? I divide everything by 2. And this is 10. So what I'd like to do is divide both sides by root 2. And you know that we can rationalize the denominator. And this is going to equal 5 root 2. Beautiful. And of course, this expression is uh, squared. And this expression is also squared. Let's just square both sides. Okay, you get the idea, right? Hopefully. When I square both sides, I'm basically be, uh, getting the, the first expression, r squared minus 6r plus 18. And then I'm getting r squared minus 8r plus 32. Okay, I'm going to call this A and I'm going to call this B because I'd like to do a little manipulation here and then take care of A and B later. Okay, so let's call those A and B. And that's the term that we get from the middle. And if you square 5 root 2, you'll be getting 25 times 2, which is equal to 50. Nice. Now, what makes it real nice is that 18 plus 32 is, is equal to 50. So those constant terms cancel out. And what do we get? We got 2R squared. Let's write that down minus 18, not 18, 6 plus 8 is equal to 14, right? Yeah, arithmetic is kind of like my weakness, I guess. Plus 2ab, square root of 2ab is equal to 0. Obviously, I'd like to isolate 2ab here, so let's go ahead and isolate it, but at the same time, divide everything by 2. So this gives us something like the square root of ab is equal to 7r minus r squared. Now, I'm going to square both sides, but it would make sense if you wrote this as r times 7 minus r because it's easier to square that way. So, let's go ahead and square both sides here one more time. So, then we get this and that, and of course, this is squared as well. So, ab is going to equal r squared 
times 7 minus r squared is going to be 49 minus 14r plus r squared. Okay, cool. Now, I'm going to go back and substitute a and b. a is equal to r squared minus 6r plus 18, without the radical, of course. And b is equal to r squared minus 8r plus 32. And this product is supposed to equal that product. Let's go ahead and expand it. 49r squared minus 14r cubed plus r to the fourth. Now, this looks like a quartic, but it's actually a cubic, because if you multiply r squared by r squared, you get r to the fourth. And then uh, you're going to distribute the whole thing, right? You're going to be getting some r squared, r cubed, so on and so forth. I'm going to save you the trouble here because this is kind of time consuming. And I'll basically give you the answer. From this equation, a lot of things are going to simplify. And you're going to end up finding the r value as 24 sevenths. Cool? That basically concludes our first method. So let's go ahead and look at the second solution method. Now, what does the second method involve? right? Well, the second method involves another tool that we use a lot in geometry, and that's called similarity. Now, let's go back to our picture and see what that looks like, right? So here, the original one. And we can actually kind of sketch a real quick one like this one. It won't be real nice, but I think it'll do, at least for our purposes. So basically, we do have the 6, 8, 10 triangle, right? And inside it, I basically have like a semicircle that is basically uh, inscribed like this, right? Something like this. Is that good? Okay. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to find the R, right? So here's how similar to works. So this is 6, this is 8, and this is 10. Okay, cool. Now, when I made those connections, I found that this was an R, and this was also an R. You know that it could make it nicer, but that's okay. No worries. Now, here's how I use similarity. Notice that this is a 90 degree angle and this is a 90 degree angle. And remember the triangles that we shaded before? Those triangles are similar. Why? If this is a 90 degree angle, which is, uh, and let's call this alpha and let's call this beta. So we know that alpha and beta are what? Complementary, right? They add up to 90. Okay, cool. So what's so cool about that? Well, here in this little triangle, alpha and beta also add up to 90. So therefore, this is beta and this is alpha. In other words, these two triangles, I can just dot them, not shade them completely. But these two dotted triangles are basically similar. So how do you use similarity? Similarity works off of ratios. And remember, this is the second method. And you are supposed to compare these two methods. Which method is easier for you? Or which method do you like better? It doesn't have to be an easier method, right? Okay, cool. Now, here's how it works. We know that this is R. This is 6 minus R. This is R and this is 8 minus R. Beautiful. I have everything I need. Do I need the hypotenuse? No, I don't. So I'm just going to use the legs. So how does this work? Start with one of the triangles. What is across from alpha? R. What's across from alpha in the other triangle? 8 minus R. Great. Okay, in the, in the first triangle, what is across from beta? 6 minus R. What is across from beta in the other triangle? R. Beautiful. Awesome. Nice. Great. So I have a basic equation like, really? I just need to solve this. Okay, let's cross multiply. R squared is equal to, if you multiply 8 minus R and 6 minus R, don't you get something like R squared minus 14R plus 48? Because, you know, some terms cancel out, whatever. Oh, R squared cancels out. Beautiful. As if I didn't know that, right? R squared cancels out and you end up with zero. Nice. So now we get 14R. If you add 14R to both sides, you get 14R equals 48. And obviously both sides you can divide by 2. And this should give you 7R equals 24. And in an effort to find R, basically, if you go ahead and divide both sides by 7, you should be getting R equals 24 over 7. And that brings us to the end of this video, right? Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you tomorrow with another video, an awesome algebra problem, right? Hopefully, or maybe a number theory problem, who knows?